Welcome to the special edition of Bourbon Talk and Tech Tasting, coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada at Dell Technologies World. Um, I am here today with two great uh, Dell partners, Chris Tobin, Vice President of Federal Sales at Red River, and our guest of honor, Bogdan Fresina, founder of DeGero. Uh, my name is Dan Romanelli from the Dell OEM Solutions Group. Um, you know, it is 12 o'clock here in Las Vegas, so we are going to forego the bourbon uh, tasting part, and we're going to get right into the, to the technology discussion. Chris is going to uh, share some bourbon with us a little bit later at a more appropriate yeah, time. Red River is hosting a party at uh, Eye Candy Lounge tonight, so uh, I have been told there is a pretty good bourbon collection there for anybody that wants to come by, so uh, looking forward to seeing everyone tonight. Awesome. Perfect. So Bogdan, um, you know, talk to us, you know, kind of a little bit about DeGiro, what you do, your role there. Uh, love to hear more about um, the company. Sure. Um, the company started 15 years ago. Uh, my name is Bogdan Fresina. I founded it uh, in 2008. Um, founded it because I was on an election campaign and I saw the um, what reporters had to go through to bring in the big satellite truck to transmit live video. It was a very expensive proposition to build out all that equipment and make it happen. And when the cellular networks got faster, I realized that if we, if we can combine all the available networks and available bandwidth around us, you can send a live video signal. And that's really was the original premise of the business. And uh, since then, we've pretty much revolutionized an entire broadcast industry uh, together with our competitors in that world. And then we uh, we then started this whole connectivity uh, sector, which was how do you provide unbreakable, reliable connectivity to the field? The world has moved to the cloud. So having that always on, always permanent connection is extremely important. Otherwise, you don't have access to your data. since you traded your hard drive cable for your internet connection. It's just not as reliable. So with our technology, by aggregating and blending all the different links around you, it provides that always on permanent connection to the cloud, which is really important in today's world, especially with what digital transformation, and everything that's going on. Yeah, so absolutely. that's kind of what I do. I'm the founder, I'm started in charge of the strategy of it, and uh, I work together with our CEO, Bruce, to make sure we, uh, we lead the vision of the business forward and, uh, and deliver always-on connectivity for our customers. Great. Sounds good. Um, as Dan mentioned, I'm in the federal space. Have you seen any adoption of your technology in that space at all to this point? Huge. As a matter of fact, it's got a huge impact on it. If you think about every field operator out there that needs to be connected, their livelihood depends on the ability to call for backup, to process individuals. Um, there's a lot of applications right now at the southern border that use DeGero to ensure that we can process all the migrants that are coming across the border in an orderly fashion. Um, there's there's massive amounts of people coming across the border every day, and those, uh, those folks need to be processed fast, because if you're not processing the official paperwork on that, it takes a very long time and, and to just sit there in, 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 in that environment. So speeding that up is an important thing for the federal government. Uh, other areas are Department of Defense, uh, specifically Air Force, some Army. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of uptake for sure. Great. Excellent. So if you could go a little bit deeper, um, you mentioned unbreakable connectivity yeah. and diversity of networks. What, talk through a little bit more of the components, how you execute on, on the mission. Sure, um, and um, the, the, so over the last 15 years, we've assembled about 100 patents on this technology, and, and we're continuing to evolve it. And, and, and the fundamentals around it is being able to predict the capacity of each link in real time, uh, every single RTT. By having the ability to predict that and forecast and using some AI and modeling technology for it, it allows us to actually optimize the traffic on each one of the networks and provide an aggregate capacity to the application layer in a way that not only can you provide QoS, but you can also provide a more resilient and higher, higher throughput connection. Great. Um, can you talk a little bit about your partnership with Dell, how, how that works Absolutely. and kind of how you're collectively going to market? Absolutely. So Dell has been a great partner uh, from day one. Um, the OEM Engineered Solutions team uh, has has engaged with us early on. Uh, they've looked at our solution. They said, hey, this would be a good fit for a lot of the other partners that exist. And the team has been nothing but fantastic. They've helped us introduce us to various customers. We're able to uh, benefit of some of the contracts that Dell in its 37 years of business, roughly, I think that's what the number was this morning, uh, that I heard uh, from, uh, from Mr. Dell, is that they've built and they've created all this, all this time their sales force. I think it was 65,000 people. It's, uh, it's, it's insane. So the reach and the ability to work in with Dell is, is really, really good. But 
in order to actually make that successful, there's a few things you need to know. It's like, how do you make something simple enough? And we're one of the four, few companies that are fortunate enough to be able to simplify our message and what we do. Uh, it is very easy to transact that and explain that. So scaling through Dell, it's about how do you put the simplicity together to allow complex solutions to be tailored on top of each other to deliver that perfect solution for your customers and, and be able to engage with the vision that your customers have to, to ensure we can, we can together deliver, uh, deliver the outcome they're looking for. Excellent. And tell us a little bit, what is the Dell content that you're, that the solution is so on? So we're, we're looking at uh, most of the edge gateways. So the, the idea is that we would take uh, various edge gateways that the 3200, uh, Dell Edge Gateway 3200, 5200, uh, the VEP16, and we would combine them with some Azure technology and then enable the edge to always be connected. So if you think about it, it's more like a networking edge product line that we're launching together and we're putting out there to the market. Excellent, excellent. You know, the, the, the buzz has been phenomenal. We have a lot of great activity. What do you see as the next evolution, next phases in our relationship? Well, I, I definitely think there's a, there's a ton of growth and we're seeing a lot of traction from customers. So what we want to do is we want to go and execute on that and, and be able to ensure our customers are, are out there. And, and again, the big thing will be uh, putting the modified technology out in the market as, as, a, as the joint product releases hopefully next year. And uh, we'll talk about that later, but I mean, it's, you know, 23, we'll talk about it in 24. But uh, hopefully we get, we get that out to the market and we execute towards the, continue, continue executing towards 911 call centers, continue to execute around our first responders to saving lives, to make sure that that connection is always there for them, to be able to call back their CAD AVL systems to operate. So it's, it's a lot of education that has to happen. It's a lot of awareness in the market and, and the market is huge. Excellent. So. Excellent. Um, I can't let you go without a question. I was informed today by somebody that you actually have two Emmy Awards. Is that, is that was somebody joking with me or is that no, a real no, 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 that's actually a real thing. So uh, never in my life would I have thought I'd go up on stage and I'd say thank you to the Academy. Uh, but we did, and it was amazing that the industry and the broadcast industry that we completely disrupted, and uh, they've awarded us two Emmys, uh, one for technical Emmys, uh, one is for inventing, inventing automatic re-request technology in a dynamic fashion across multitude of networks, uh, because what that does, it allows you to, if a network fails, recover the data on another network very, very fast. So, because that's one of the things that we do as part of the technology and, and the blending technology, it the industry recognized us as one of the pioneers and they've awarded us an Emmy for it. And the second one was for actually disrupting the business through bonded cellular networking. And we have received that in 20, 2020 during the pandemic. So we got one before the pandemic and one during the pandemic. And uh, it was by far the coolest award we've ever received and the, the two awards that we've ever got because it's an industry recognized you for the impact you've had on it and the disruption you've done on it. Yeah. So the cool thing is taking that sentiment and applying it to the rest of the industries where you're saving lives and improving healthcare, improving human performance and the ability of what it can do. How can you not feel good about that, right? So no, absolutely. yes. Absolutely, absolutely. So you're, you know, you're talking to a guy who proudly displays, you know, golf trophies in his office from like 15 years ago for, from club tournaments. <laughs> so I can't even imagine where, you know, what does somebody do with an Emmy? Where do you display that? That's in your a house? good question. So, so, so Emmys are kind of a funny thing because they're numbered. So a little thing you don't know. So you can only get eight of them. There's a, there's a maximum eight you can get. So for everybody who participates in it. So we bought, we bought some of our, some of our folks, a few Emmys and we're trying to actually get some more, but during the pandemic it was a little bit complicated to do that. But nonetheless, um, so we have one at the office and one in my house in the office, in, in, cool. in the office. So, uh, and uh, we're, we're working through the copies to make sure we have a few more, but yeah. Awesome. So talk to me about, you know, any cool use cases or cool things that, you know, you guys have done uh, yeah. at DeGiro with the product. So when we first started out, uh, in 2010, Vancouver had the Olympic games. And, uh, one of the challenges was, was that CTV in Canada, uh, a guy by the name of Bob Hurst, who was the president of it. He wanted, they wanted to actually together with another guy by the name of Bob McLaughlin, they wanted to put live video torch on TV. So traditionally, if you think about it, you'd have to put up a satellite truck every about few hundred meters and transmit live that torch. That becomes very costly, complicated and expensive deployment out there. So I remember I, I got this call and they said, hey, can we use your technology to broadcast the Olympic torch live? Now, we've been in business for about a year and a half. 
I don't know much about business in the first place. I'm sort of learning. I mean, I've done another startup before and so on, but never really negotiated with like television channels, et cetera. Sure. So they're like, come back with a budget. And I, you know, I ran some numbers. I took some guesses on it and I go in and I go, uh, I, I told them $50,000. I, I couldn't finish my sentence before they said yes. And here's the check. So I'm like, damn it. But that's another story. That's a business yeah. thing that you got to learn out of it. So we, um, they go, okay, great, so let's go live and do this. So, so the crazy thing was 30,000 miles. That's how long the Olympic torch ran across Canada and broadcast almost every moment of it except the Northern Arctic tour, which was a lot of plane flying, complicated stuff. So you would put together, we, we, we went and bought a camper vehicle. We cut out the back end of it. We put a Sony camera that was, that was looking in the back, an operator that would, that would robotically control it in the field, and, and our DeGiro transmitter, which at the time was more like a suitcase that would heat up your, head, your feet as well uh, as part of its functionality. So they, they, they bring in the Olympic torch, flies in uh, from, uh, from Greece, and it lands. And uh, we said we would, because it was a big starting day, they weren't going to start live on the torch relay live for a couple of days later. So at the time, there was only 3G networking. So 3G networking does about 300 kilobits per second upload. So we had three networks, 600 kilobits, 900 kilobits. Uh, but we weren't able to really get that in most places. So it was like really crummy quality and everything else. There's this new thing called HSPA was just coming out, HUPA coming out, which was a two megabit uplink on the TELUS network. And funny enough, it was launched the day before the torch launched. So I couldn't get SIMs for it and everything. So we took a little potter plane from Victoria uh, in Canada. We flew to Vancouver. We grabbed the SIMs. We flew back. We, we put them in, and absolutely nothing worked that day. There were all kinds of nightmares. There was, but it was okay because it was three days before it was going to go start live. So anyway, so this repeated itself for like two days of like just trying to troubleshoot, sure. make things work. And, and Bob, the president, is like, oh, man, I'm, I'm going to get yelled at by the CEO. This is not going to be a fun thing. And um, so we get to the third day. Finally, we're, we're in Nanaimo, which is sort of northern Victoria, yeah. uh, Victoria Island. And um, somehow they turned on the network. And, and like literally half an hour before the end of the day, everything just started working. So the guy I was working with at CTV, awesome dude. And he's like, dude, I'm going to get fired after this. So this is pretty much done. I said, no, don't worry. I'm going to go into Bob and I'll go and explain it to him. It's all on me. And uh, sure enough, like 30 minutes before the end of the day, everything started working. It was crystal clear. It was all good. So we're going out to Bob's hotel. And uh, Bob's like, come on in. And then as we go in, he's watching this thing, right? And, and he's like... I have a problem. And we're like, oh, man, what, what's going on now? Like after two and a half days of yeah. not a good, a good event, it's like, what, what's happening? So it's like, oh, I'm have a, I have a problem. It's like, what's that? It's like, well, I'm, I'm with Yvonne Fortran on the phone, which is the CEO of CTV. And he's not seeing it. And I'm like, what do you mean he's not seeing it? It's like, no, he's seeing the stream, but it's not at the same time. Because 15 years ago, when you were running sure. web streaming, it wasn't synced. Right. And it was like 30 seconds apart. So they're so used to live production that they were expecting things to move in line that yep. one would see the, the delay of 20 seconds for that frame to make around the corner, right? And they were yelling at each other, going, where is this damn thing? And I'm like, but it's picture perfect. Like, I mean, the thing that we did was perfect, yeah. except that they were arguing over the timing of it, which I couldn't help. But nonetheless, the, once they saw it, they're like, oh, I see it. It's coming around the corner. This is the most beautiful thing ever. We now yeah. see it live. So ever since then, we broadcasted the rest of it. It was, uh, it was crazy. We've got hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage there was uh, there were people that proposed to each other on the on the on the, during the olympic torch uh we had arnold schwarzenegger run the torch in wow. canada that was really cool right at the last at the last day before the olympic ceremony the the opening of that uh which was another that was the, as the end of the whole story is uh um another gentleman from ctv was like um uh, Listen, if we've got eight hours of black, because they had a special for the sure. launch of yeah. Torch Relay, right? Yep. Of, of, of the Olympic Games. If we have eight hours of black, I had a really good 25 year career at CTV. <laughs> it's on you guys. <laughs> That's awesome. So, but it all worked out. It was great. It was, it was one of the coolest memorable things. And, and CTV was kind enough to actually give us one of the real torches and, and, and put on there. Um, and they actually thanked us. They, they, they actually said, it's like, thank you to the Gere Labs and, and my name for bringing the Olympic Torch to all Canadians during the winter 2010 Olympics. Awesome, really cool. So that was like a really, really cool story. It was, it was, it was really fun. And it's, it's one of also a cool prize thing that you have in your house. 
and that's sitting in my office. Okay, got that. I was going to ask. I was going to ask. Yeah, absolutely. Very so, Bogdan, cool. I understand you have a great Super Bowl use case too. Yeah. So we did. We, we the one of the cool things. Is, so the Department of Homeland came to us, and uh, one of the things is they 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 do a lot of uh, protection for the security in the air because obviously. Super Bowl is one of the tier one security events, is one of the largest events in period every year, right? Uh, 100 plus million viewers. And um, the federal government is responsible for securing that to ensure safety for people and, and that happening. One of the things that they're responsible for that's very important is securing the airwaves. So basically no random helicopter can go on top of, a, of the Super Bowl or plane or whatever, they're trying to secure that area. So in order to do that, they fly helicopters back and forth and they monitor the crowds, they monitor the things to make sure there's nothing that weird that happens. So one of the challenges they had, they had, they were looking at how do I distribute that video? How do I capture it, transmit and distribute it for all the people that need to see it and get it right away so they can deal with the situation if something ever happens. So the right decisions are done right there on the spot and quickness and, and, and availability of knowledge knowledge is shared because a picture is worth a thousand words, sure. video is worth a lot more. So um, the, uh, the, the federal government has used our product for providing that video uplink as well as the capturing of the video together with some other edge technologies that allow you to, to do short distance transmission from the helicopter to the ground and then from the ground it ends up in this truck and then from this truck it actually gets then transmitted and distributed into their own internal video systems. And we've been fortunate enough to do this for our last two Super Bowls. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and it's, it's got a huge impact because at the end of the day is increasing safety and, and uh, in the environment that we're in today. So yeah. I love the juxtaposition of those two stories because you're bringing entertainment and an experience to people but then you're also making the event safer. Great combination. They didn't give you a Super Bowl trophy too, did no, they? Or, they didn't. No, right, we didn't. Right, we didn't get sure. that. Okay. We didn't get. I yeah. did get to get on the field though once. Oh, very cool. So that was like yeah. really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so and and that was also because of a broadcaster. But yeah, it was it was really nice to to get to experience that. But no, we didn't get a Super Bowl trophy. <laughs> we'll work on a ring. Got it. <laughs> well, Bogdan, before I close us out, any last words, any last impressions? No, leave just for us? Uh, I want to really, first of all, thank, thank uh, thanks uh, thanks to Dell and and the welcoming that they've they allow for. The, looking out for your customers and really trying to find solutions that fit. So I'm lucky we're one of the fortunate ones to help out with that and allow for that to happen. And uh, I really am excited about this partnership and I look forward to growing it and continuing it. Great. So Chris Bogdan, on behalf of uh, Bourbon Talk and Te Tasting, thank you so much for giving, you the time, giving us the time today. I can tell you we are super pumped about this relationship, super pumped about going out and winning business together and really looking forward to the future. So thank, thank you, you so much. much. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Yep. Thank Absolutely. You.